well the weather's improved enormously and that what that means is I'm able to get into the engine room to clear it out um, I've got a little wire brush and um, <laughs> we we went off to buy some nappies because there are certain places in the engine room that I can't get to just to, to scoop the water up or to hose it out as it were so to stick a nappy down there it soaks it all up it soaks an enormous amount up actually um, let me just show you show you the difference here's a normal nappy we've just not used yet so that's that's like that yeah. and then excuse how this looks because it's it's all brown and rusty but that is a full nappy <laughs> look at that and it soaks up an awful lot of water which is perfect so you just throw those down there just sucks up the water it's absolutely marvelous so we heard somebody suggest um, disposable nappies um, we thought it'd probably be a good idea so we invested in one pack and the only the only ones we could get in B&M were these um, four to seven year olds which I'm thinking about it if that's a nappy for you know four, four five six or seven year old they're probably going to do a lot more pee than a baby so they're probably designed to soak up a lot more um, fluid aren't they which is great oh, look at that that's just like super <laughs> super full of bilge water um, so so really um, we're getting on a bit soaking up the water it was when I started I started this yesterday and it looked like it was a mammoth 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 job and I think it still is quite a big job to get done um, but the water was like two inches in there and it's either rain water getting in um, a bit of condensation because it's it gets cold in there and you know the condensation maybe a leak from the calorifier maybe and some some and I will say some of the water comes from the stern gland which is where the engine is and the propeller shaft goes out of the boat onto the propeller there's a gland that is packed with um, wadding and grease to stop the water flooding back in but it is under the water um, but it does on all boats it, there's a you know occasional drip 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 and you have to um, repack it with grease I've got a grease um, bottle up on the deck that you turn the handle and it just forces grease down into the gland it's, it's sort of waterproof grease um, and that helps to minimize that all the, the water coming in through the stern gland but let me show you how far we've got so far. Here we are looking from the um, the stern door, entry door. So making sure that's Wendy in there doing a bit of housework. Um, so we're looking back at the engine bay from there and you'll see that I've taken the whole engine bay cover off. It's, it's a huge opening, isn't it? Um, that's about three foot wide by maybe five or six foot long. I think it must be six foot long. Uh, that's the that's the engine. <clears throat> it's a BMC 1800cc uh, diesel engine. Um, and you'll see if I come down into the uh, engine room, if I can get down there safely while holding the camera, yep. Okay, so we turned around. This down here is the stern gland. So we've got the engine gearbox 
propeller shaft that goes out of the boat let's just turn you around so that goes out of the boat and some water drips in through here through this bit here and we've got a little bucket there <coughs> that we'd normally have a, a bilge pump in but there's been a lot of water all around here and you'll see all of the the sort of rusty bits in here and this is quite normal for older boats I was, in fact I was looking at uh, somebody else's boat yesterday in their engine room and asking advice and so on and it seemed you know I had a look at theirs and it, theirs seemed exactly the same as this and I've seen lots more on YouTube um, so there you are um, that is our calorifier or hot water tank and uh, in the top of there mind you don't get bumped off the ledge Wendy worries about the, the other boat. Sorry about the interruption with a with a boat uh, going out. It was uh, behind us, uh, just over this way, and uh, it was it was very close. And Wendy Wendy was concerned that it might bump into us, and and as I was precariously perched, uh, it might have fallen over. But you'll see those nappies are doing their job of soaking up, but I've got to get right down there through this gap um, <laughs> to scrape off all that rust and paint it with what's called Vactan. So this is the stuff, um, it's a rust inhibitor, uh, causes, uh, let's say, for treatment of corroded iron and steel surfaces. Wire brush the surface to remove loose rust, ensure surfaces uh, oil and grease free apply by spray or brush 40 microns thick I don't know how I'm going to measure 40 microns I'll just I'll just brush it on um, it seems to work because um, I did a bit of uh, I did a bit of cleaning up of the deck yesterday here um, all of this you'll see you'll see if you get close down here the edge of the paintwork here now I've scraped off all of this here to uh, to reveal bare steel and and red oxide paint because um, it was all flaking off and looking a little bit rusty it's all pretty solid now when you paint it on the bits that have been um, rust treated or corrosion prevented if you like go black it goes on white and it turns uh, gradually black over time. Of course what we're mostly concerned about is to keep the the engine room broadly rust free um, because of course from about um, let me show you from about this level here inside the engine room from about here um, is underwater so um, if anything below that level gets a hole in it the water will come rushing in um, a little bit like the Poseidon adventure uh, so we want to keep we want to keep all that down there rust free and solid steel as far as we can i.e. no holes so that's what we're going to do but you'll see there's so much um, sort of muck and and sort of rusty marks here I mean these pretty much sort of sort of wipe off if I give that I'll give that a bit of a spray with some old multi-purpose cleaner give it a bit of a rub and a lot of it comes off 
All right, and then the rest of it has a, has a wire brush on it. So, you can see that actually it's not as bad as it sort of first appears. But there is a lot to do, so I'm going to crack on and give you sort of updates during the day to see how far I've got. I don't expect to get anywhere near paintable today, maybe tomorrow or the next day, but um, we'll see how far we get. Uh, I won't be filming as I go, I'll just give you updates to see how far we've got in the clean up and the rust removal and then I'll show you it before we paint on this uh, Vactan which um, is super stuff there's, there's two types apparently there's uh, something called Furtan and then this called Vactan now the Furtan is a bit more difficult or complex to use because you, have, you do the same thing clean it up and then paint it on but then you have to wash it off which seems a bit crazy. This stuff, you clean it up, paint it on, and that's almost, almost your undercoat um, ready to paint. But I'll, I won't be, I won't be using that as an undercoat. I'll be doing some sort of, uh, if I can get it, the sort of red oxide -y sort of paint. I don't think they sell that anymore because it's a bit too toxic. Um, I think there's grey. This this grey paint that's already on here that's that's sort of an undercoat and then uh, you know give, give it a few coats of that um, might make it last a few more years hopefully anyway um, I'll give you an update a bit later we've got on quite uh, quite well today um, I've cleared off one ledge um, there's a when the when the boat comes down to the propeller it sort of closes in and that's the bit they call the swim with and then the propeller comes out but above that the the boat is the full width obviously so it's got ledges uh, under well above above that so there's the sort of curve and then the propeller is just there then they've got these two ledges so what I've done is I've cleared out the uh, the bit where the um, stern gland drips water in. So I've cleaned all that out, and I've got a bucket of muck over there because I you know loads of loads and loads of stuff because that's you know who knows how long since that's been cleaned out, um, but it's however long time of grease and oil and water and muck and you know and just it just builds up and then all the flaking paintwork so what I'm happy to say is that um, just let me get get a glove on so I can touch this ridiculous stuff here So we got this. This is the uh, cut off bucket that was um, sitting underneath the stern gland, and then I filled it with this um, stuff. And this is thick paint, maybe a bit of surface metal rusted coming off, but it, it sort of breaks and crumbles easily. But I've got it's sort of half that bucket because I've got um, I've got two nappies in there just to soak up the water that was in there it was sort of water and oil and grease so that's that's all that and I've got that out it's not a great bucket to put under there because it it only just fits in so maybe it is a great bucket I don't know um, but I might think about I might think about a different bucket 
um, maybe a smaller squarer bucket so as I say I've cleaned out that bit and uh, underneath there this this ledge on the starboard side I've wire brushed off cleaned off and I've painted that with uh, Vactan the the rust uh, converter the rust treatment rust preventer whatever it is um, but let me show you I think you, you probably remember a bit earlier in the video I showed you the stern gland bit where the bucket was but now look at it clean and dry just there so that's all been nicely cleaned out also there's um, there's no real water down in that side and I've got this is this is drying this side the starboard side is drying out very nicely so I've had the um, I've had the hatch open for as long as I could today um, it did rain for a bit so I took that opportunity to pop out to the Chandlers and buy some of this this is uh, T-Mac bilge and locker paint chemical and oil resistant easy to clean perfect for wood GRP steel and aluminium this is steel so it's perfect <laughs> this is uh, it's um, from marine paints and varnishes since 1908 I, I think this is more modern than 1908 um, yeah <laughs> 30th of the 9th uh, 2020 so <laughs> reasonably new can of paint um, which I'll be painting on there now I think it's probably already got um, that sort of grey it doesn't feel very the paint doesn't feel very thick you know how you how when paints really good you touch it and it feels really good well this doesn't it feels like it's been just splashed on quick job um, just to get it done and I think that is sort of confirmed by the fact that if you look under under there I don't know if you can see under there at the at the very top you'll see maybe you'll see <laughs> I don't know whether you could um, maybe you'll see that somebody's sort of been here and painted upwards and not quite reached the top and they've not done across the join there um, and that's something I'm going to try to rectify get the paint all over um, the right bits so that's that's a day's work done I'm just uh, it's about six o'clock in the evening um, still quite a nice nice day although it's, it has rained today so it's not been it's not been perfect it's been warmer I'm hot <laughs> because of sort of clambering around in this little tiny space what I did find is that I can't get my body down that gap this gap here um, I can't get through so I, I sort of can't get down to, to get my hands down there this is the fuel line so I can't clamber around the back of that um, and that that's the chlorophyll. That is that is going to come out because we're having a new chlorophyll, which will be shorter and wider, which might make it a bit more difficult to get round there. But I've been using that mop there to um, get down to the to the bits there. I'll probably have to use a brush on a stick to really get down and paint that. But you'll notice up there as well, you can't you can't really it's not been really been painted to the top. It's got red on it and that's probably the the original 
um, red oxide paint that they covered the steel with when it was new. Um, I've also done a bit of the a bit of the the gully cleaning here, so I've chipped off a lot of rust. I've not back tanned that yet. Um, probably probably tackle all of that run tomorrow maybe. Um, but there's a lot of work to do. It's it's a lot. I didn't. I knew it was going to be a big job, but I didn't realise that it was going to be quite so time consuming. It really does take ages to you know to brush things down, get it right, chip bits of um, bits of rust or flaky paintwork off. And I've got um, I've got this this lovely wire brush with a scraper on the end and that's been that has been really really great for really going across the the bobbles because it, it's it's sort of bobble it's, it's all bobbly um, around where it's sort of sort of rusting and peeling and you get that across it you know push down with that and that really takes them off it really does I've got I did that ledge with that and it really you know got a load a load of muck off there um, so I'm really pleased with the progress so far I'm really happy I, I wasn't quite sure um, whether whether it would be a, a decent job to do or not but it actually is it, it's quite satisfying when you look back and think oh yeah that that's really great so I think it's going to be it's going to be really really good um, yeah so we we've got um, we've got the kitchen to re redo as well because that's pretty much becoming a nightmare the oven is awful and uh, the fridge is mm, not that efficient but after all it's, it's a 20 22 year old electrolux and a you know 20 22 year old vanette cooker um both on color so we well the um the fridge is on 230 volt at the moment which is which i hate because i don't want i don't want a 230 volt fridge i want a 12 volt fridge um while I was over at the Chandler's today getting the T-Mac paint, the bilge and locker paint, um, one of our neighbours, like three or four boats down there, was over at the Chandler's as well, and they were buying a Shoreline 12-volt fridge with a little freezer box in, which is exactly the one that we have been looking at to replace ours. So um, we had a little chat about that. In fact... Um, we transported it back for them just by chance we were there with our van and it fitted neatly in our van stood upright um, rather than laying it on its side which they didn't really want to do tra transport it back in their car so we transported it back for them had a chat about them and you know the guy has been into boats for many 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 years I think he said this is his eighth or tenth boat that he's had not all narrow boats but he said, Shoreline 12, 24 volt fridge, it's the bee's knees, that's it, that's the one to get. So I'm really glad that that, that is the one we'd sort of settled on. The, um, the Shoreline, not the larder fridge. If you have a larder fridge, you really need a freezer. And I'm not really that sure that the battery will take the pounding that a freezer can give it. You know, because that, that's going to, you know, two, two and a half amps, I think, for the freezer. It's really power hungry on 12 volt. So, who knows, we might, we might consider it. But we're going to, we're going to, initially, we're going to go for the fridge with the freezer compartment, which is quite big, yeah, about, about that size. So, a good, good size. Um, and we're going to, we're going to do that at some point. But, after we get this done... And the reason we're doing this under a bit of a time pressure is because next week we're having the diesel heater fitted 
which is why that's coming out, new clarifier, new heating system, um, so that <clears throat> next winter, if we <laughs> if we stay on the boat for the whole winter, we will be cosy and warm automatically because it'll have a, a timer switch, just like you do at home, <laughs> on your central heating system. Just, it'll be all modern. <laughs> so so that'll be nice. Um, we'll be able to, you know, wake up with the bedroom warm um, rather than have to wake up with it freezing and then go and switch your heater on. Bit of a nightmare, that. But <laughs> we get we get by. Um, so there you are. That's, uh, that's the progress for now. Hopefully, by the time you see our next video, this will be all painted in a nice light grey shiny paintwork. I'll see you then, bye bye for now.